This film is part of an instructional series on fishing. With the help of some of America's greatest anglers, we will share with you several effective new fishing techniques, as well as methods proven by the test of time. Your host is Homer Circle, angling editor of Sports of Field magazine and the author of many books on bass fishing. Homer is also a member of the Fishing Hall of Fame. Hi, I'm Homer Circle. If you're like me, you probably feel there's nothing quite like the thrill of an explosive surface strike from a big bass. There's something about the intensity of the experience that'll leave you shaking even after you set the hook and land him, if you get that far. But for some reason, a lot of bass fishermen stay away from topwater fishing. They think it's unproductive, at least compared to other methods. Or maybe they think it's so specialized it requires a great deal of skill. And that's a shame because they're missing out on a lot of great fishing action. So today, we're going to look at some of the best ways to catch bass on the surface. These methods are simple, easy to put into practice, and best of all, they'll put fish on the end of your line. Now, one type of surface lure is called a buzz bait. That big spinner makes surface bubbles as big as golf balls. And two-time bass master, classic champion Ricky Clun, is one of the best at fishing them. Ricky does most of his fishing in the south, but these methods will work all over the country, even where you live. This week we're going to talk about topwaters, uh, more specifically buzz baits. It's a very popular bait the last couple of years. It's, uh, some people are, maybe might not call it topwater, some people call it spinner bait, but actually it's a topwater because it's got a safe disc version here. I'm going to show you two different versions today. Uh, but this particular one has a safety pin configuration, and it's got a prop instead of blades. And actually, the head will run about an inch to an inch and a half under the surface with the, while the prop will ch churn the surface. This particular one here is one of my favorites. It's, uh, it makes a louder noise than the next one I'll be showing you. I particularly like this, this bait uh, at night or when I'm trying to locate fish and cover a lot of water. It's got a very loud uh, plop, plop, plop type sound like the old jitterbug. Any of you used to fish with jitterbugs at, during the day or at night at one. Uh, it's good around weed beds and stump beds. and uh, it Actually, I've seen it pull fish as deep as 15 foot deep over creek channels where you got some stump and stump beds. The other type of uh, buzz bait I'd be using today will be the, uh, what I call an inline, inline buzz bait. It's actually got a, a bucktail right behind the prop in this case, whereas the other one, if you remember, had it the, the right below the prop. And this one actually will run right on the surface, even the bucktail and the hook itself, where actually the other one kind of ran under the water. This one I use normally on quieter, calmer days where the water is, and it's a much finer whirl. It's not as loud as the other one. Uh, I like to use it also on real heavy weed beds. Uh, it'll come through real matted over weed beds where the other one w won't. The other one will go through weed beds, but not the real matted stuff where it's whereas this particular bait will go through the heavier weed beds. Uh, we'll try to uh, ease back in here and fish some of these stumps and utilize both these buzz baits and give you a better idea of how they work and where to work them at. The south is full of these type of places. In fact, I'm a timber fisherman, so I wish there was more, but uh, we are very fortunate in that Toledo Bend, for one, in Louisiana and Texas, and you go all through the south, Millwood and Arkansas. Uh, you've got West Point in Alabama, Seminole on the Florida-Georgia border. Santee Cooper, South Carolina is another one. It's just fantastic lakes all over the south, and these are some of our, our better southern fishing lakes. You've got to look for in timber the same thing that you'd look for if you were fishing weed beds, and you look for the thicker clumps of timber, number one, and number two, you look for the logs or the trees that are broken and are laying at an angle either above the water or in the water. This is, tends to be your better target. It's naturally it helps to know what's underneath the surface also. The ideal condition is, I think it's more related to me to temperature than the type of water you're fishing. I prefer water but 55, mid 50s or above. The water can't get too hot for a buzz bait. Uh, you know, where it really seems to hurt the buzz bait is when it drops in the low 50s and uh, then they don't want them to break the surface for it. Bass feed a lot on the surface and this bait will definitely get their attention if they're interested and they'll move to the bait and it, it, the, the noise and the disturbance on the surface will actually many, many times aggravate them into hitting even when they're not hungry. Uh, I've never seen anything like it in life except maybe a duck 
paddling across the water, and he'd have to be going pretty fast, or a big coop, but then that'd get on the big side. Now, I'm not sure it looks like much of anything to him, except that it's a surface disturbance. How do you work the lure through the water? Is there a certain way you should work a buzz bait? I think all of that's kind of a personal preference thing, and I'll tell you my preference on working buzz baits is to work it as slow as you can possibly work it and yet keep it on top. A lot of guys like to reel it fast. I, don't, I, don't, I rarely ever reel one fast. I, I just barely keep it on top, keep the rod high, and here it just plop, 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 plop. I fish targets. I don't fish all the way to the boat with it. And so you'll see me reeling it fast, at times, but when it, that's only to get it back to the boat and make another cast. I'll, when I'm actually working it around the log, around the stump, that's when I'm going to slow it down with this plop, 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 plop noise. Another thing about working a buzz bait, I think I'd like to point out right here, is that a lot of times people that are unfamiliar with it and use a buzz bait for the first time will tie it on and throw it out there, and it will actually run off the right or off the left. A lot of people kind of complain about this, you know, and they did a big come back and bend the wire and try to straighten it out and to get it to run straight. Well, I actually like for mine to run torque left or right, you know. And uh, say if I got a log laying out there, I'll throw past the log and I actually let it start running. Even if you miss the log by one or two foot, you threw past it, the bait will run right into the log. So actually what you're doing, you're covering about two thirds of that stump or log with one cast. Boy, that's when the strike's going to occur. It's running right in there, right into that bass's house. a great percentage of the fish that hit it will be four pound plus fish. Yeah, they'll hit it two different ways. They'll, they'll suck the bait like any top water, and then a lot of times they'll just slash through the bait, just explode body, every head, everything, tail comes out of the water and they land on top of the bait. So it's a very exciting lure to fish. Look like one right there, something. Let's try it, just what I'm talking about on him. Oh, there. I think he's behind the stump, though. There he is. Come loose. Oh, yeah, that's a pretty good one. These buzz baits really are exciting. I think if you just try some of the techniques we've tried to show you here today, not only will you find it's a very productive way to fish, but it's a very fun way to fish. When fishing buzz baits, remember that bass will feed actively on the surface, and even when they're not, you can sometimes aggravate them into striking by repeatedly casting a buzz bait into their territory. Conditions for using buzz baits are dictated mainly by water temperature over 55 degrees and depth 15 feet or less. You know, most bodies of water across the country have acres of weed-choked shallow flats. They're made up of lily pads, coon tail, moss beds grown right to the surface. They exist in the backwaters of most of our rivers, in our ponds, lakes, and reservoirs. Early in the season, many anglers come in and fish them successfully for largemouth bass. But come summertime, they avoid them like the plague. The weed growth is so heavy, they stay out of it. Now, if you're one of these anglers, you're missing a lot of sport because some of the finest bass fishing near you can be right there in the heaviest cover you can find. One way is to fish the surface. And so now, Al Linder's going to show you a couple of tricks to get right in this stuff and catch big bass, even right in the middle of summer. Incidentally, your best time to come in and fish these shallow water bays like this is your first couple hours in the morning, your last couple hours in the evening, or on nice, calm, overcast days. Uh, the key thing to remember here is always stay on a calm side. Don't go into a bay that the wind is blowing into because you're going to have problems. The fish will not be active. You want to stay on the lee side of the lake. Super important thing to remember in shallow water bass fishing in cover like this. We're going to start to work this clump of of pads right here but before we do let's take a look at some of the equipment we're going to be using my two favorite shallow water lures to start with first let's go over the old standby the spoon this bait has proven the test of time as far as catching bass it's been around longer than most lures that we see in today's markets i dress them with a rubber skirt like this or a twister tail or a piece of pork rind anything that serves as an attractor 
Here's another good shallow water bait. This is a surface type bait. You can see it's got a propeller like spinner on the front and it kind of churns across and gurgles like a little motorboat going across the top of the water. It's got a flat spoon here so you can retrieve slower and keep the bait on top for those short strikers. I use a trailer hook on the back. This is an important part in fishing heavy cover. You get so many fish that are just missed, this trailer hook will increase your catch ratio quite a bit. These two baits are fished generally relatively fast over the top of this stuff. Anybody that fishes this type of cover with these baits know that at least 50 to 60 percent of your strikes are missed fish. That's why I call them my fish finders. This lure here, I call my fish catcher. What I do with it, I take the spoon or the little buzz bait and work real fast to bring a fish up out of the cover. As soon as I get a short strike or a miss, I reel right in right away and throw this right exactly where that boil was. And believe me, you'll catch, your catch ratio will increase by 50 to 60%. It's amazing. It's the way to get shallow water fish. When you're talking about equipment for fishing heavy cover like this, there's only one word for it, heavy. This is no place for a light action rod enthusiast. What we're talking about is a heavy action rod like this. At a minimum, 17 pound test line and a good sturdy free spool reel. You're, you don't fight a fish in this kind of cover. You have to horse them out. And that's the name of the game. We use two rods, one to find fish the majority of the time for the short strikers, and this rod right at your side, ready to throw in on any fish that boils at the spoon and misses. Okay, let me show you what I'm talking about. When you work these flats like this, don't be afraid to throw way up inside the pads. When you come into little pockets or at the end of it, always drop the, drop the spoon. I missed that fish. That's what I was talking about earlier. A lot of times you get short strikers like that. You've got to get that frog right in there right after that. You got five, six seconds to play before you'll nail it again. There he is. That's why you got heavy equipment. It's fighting dang good. Oh, come on out of there. Oh, a typical pad bass. Come here, come here. All right. That's what I'm talking about by the size and types of bass that live up inside this heavy, heavy cover great deals at a time. Three, four, five pound bass are far from exceptions. In many cases, you got seven and eights in here in good numbers. This frog, incidentally, it might look like it's hard, but it's a real soft, spongy rubber. When these fish hit it, Inside this stuff, they hang on to it almost like they do a plastic worm. It's real soft. It's almost alive. Let's put this one away and let's see if we can go get another one. Here's a little trick to remember when you're spoon fishing. There's a lot of days, particularly bright sunny days like this, where a flashy silver spoon like this will turn fish off. They won't come up and hit it. Where they will come up and hit a dull finish like this black finish. Most of the spoons that I buy are all finished in silver, and I carry with me different color magic markers. All you do, if you're not getting any action or it seems slow, do yourself a little coloring process on the spoon. Take the magic marker, knock all of that flash off it. nothing to it. You can get any kind of haze or finish that you want on it. A goldish or brown with, with a yellow magic marker, a blue magic marker. It's amazing at what you can do to get different color contrast. It, some days it can make a heck of a difference. Okay, let's see if this colored spoon does make that much difference. Didn't get nothing throwing a lighter silver spoons. Ooh, boy, that thing is just skipping across that and pads. You almost dance that spoon when you get in one of those pockets or every time you come to the end, to the end of a clump, just kind of dance it around a little bit. It just gives it a little added type of, type of action. Just hold your rod tip just like this. Just shake it and that spoon is just, it just almost darts, almost darts in place when you come out of them. There's one, right on the edge. 
Come on, baby. He's running right at me. Get out of that junk. Oh, this one we'll put back. A feisty little dude. Go on, little fella. The highlight, the things you should remember, first couple hours in the morning, first couple hours in the evening, or preferably calm days. Try to stay out of the windy part. Stay with heavy equipment. Remember, you're not going to get in here with light equipment and get any kind of fish out of here. Give these methods a fair try on your lakes. Good luck and good fishing. Now let's check out a different way to fish plastic worms by making them float. Glenn Lau is going to demonstrate this special technique for us along with Ricky Klein. Okay, slip that right through there, right? So until it comes out the other side. And on this one, we're going to put a black worm. And what you do, you slide that right up in like this. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, and then slide it so it comes right on around. And you get you get it so it slides all the way up to the head now. Now this head is cork, and you can see it works rather nicely. We'll be fishing with Glenn Lau. He's probably most known for his television production and his unbelievable underwater photography. I don't think as many know that he's probably one of the finest fishermen in the country also. And he, he's going to be fishing, as you can tell, we'll be fishing with a worm. But uh, I don't think it's like any worm you've ever seen before. It's definitely not like any I've ever seen. Most of us associate fishing worm on the bottom. This is, a bit, this is a floating worm, but he actually is going to fish on the top. Okay, let me show this to you again here, Rick. I like to use a bobber. It's a regular brim bobber, and you can see we have three colors here. And the, the plain color one is the one that we use when we have uh, clear weather like this and the sun shining. But when there's overcast, you need these bright colors to be able to see that lure because a lot of time a bass will come up and it will suck it down in and uh, it'll just disappear, and you, and you wonder where it is, and it's really in a fish's mouth, and by that time, it's back out. Okay, now we'll cut this tip off here about, oh, anywhere from a quarter inch to three-eighths of an inch down. Let's do that right now. Then, I like to use a wire hook, you can see it here, and push it up through that cork so it comes out the other side. Now, that's the, that's the part that stays ahead of the worm. Now we're going to take a white worm for you and put it right up through here you can see so it goes on there about an inch inch and a half on that hook now the idea is to get a worm that's straight back now see what you have here a nice worm this this worm is has air mixed into it so it's a floating worm and this head is designed to keep that hook floating so what you're going to see coming through the water is a worm that sets about halfway out of the water and half in the water. We're going to start right up here along the weeds and start fishing along the, the bank there. And the reason that it's going to be so good is because all those snakes that are in this area that come crawling out. And of course, a lot of people don't know that bass like snakes, but they sure do. So let's, uh, let's go right up here and start. Okay. So I'll move up here put these polarized glasses on because a lot of times you can see those fish. This water's awful clear. Yeah. Okay, now what we're going to do, Rick, is move right up along the shoreline here. Let me start running this motor. Slow that down a little. We'll work over here. And the idea is to cast the lure in as close to the bank as you can. And the most important part is Really, the most important part, and it's the hardest thing for people to comprehend. When you cast that thing in, let it set for at least 15 seconds, or the count of 15, or however you do it. That's so important, because a bass will spook a lot of times when that, when that lure hits the water. You know, he's surprised by it. Then he gets curious, and then if you wait that long, you've got his curiosity up. Cast it in, let it set about 15 seconds, and then just twitch it a little bit. And you just so it vibrates. And nine times out of ten, that's when they'll hit it. If that doesn't work, then start giving it just little twitches as you, as you move it. Little twitches. That worm will walk back and forth, back and forth. That's important for most people to have light line. 
if you're in a place with real big fish, you may need heavier line. But if you're catching pound, two pound, three pound bass, I would say six pound test line, any kind of tackle. It doesn't matter if it's casting, light spinning, or spin cast, push button type reels, that'll work. So you don't have to have any sophisticated uh, sophisticated kind of equipment. Okay, let's give it a try. Right as close as you can now. And, and I got to reemphasize, let it sit there. I know that 15 it's, seconds doesn't sound long, but I, I've fished enough to know that that's a, almost an eternity when you're waiting on a lure, waiting to move it. I tell you, we're going to catch it. You were going to catch it. I just, you ever have that feeling when you move into a place? Hey, confidence is a big part of it. Got to believe you're going to catch them. Main thing is when you cast in. That was just fishing area that I was. Oh! You see that? <laughs> Woo! Come on, come on. Oh, I love to see him jump. Come on. All right, come on. Oh, did you see? <laughs> Isn't that fun? Well, there's nothing prettier than the jump. Largemouth bass, I tell you. They're good eating, but the main thing I like is when they hit, oh, beautiful, beautiful. What are you using, four or six? You said yeah. six or four. Yeah, it feels more like four. I got, I thought I had six on here, but you got to take it easy. Oh, come on. Oh, oh. oh I look like a real rank amateur then. That's good. Oh, boy. That's beautiful. That's nice fish. There you go. Yeah, isn't that nice? Got my thumb there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sharp I like little that. hook. I'm gonna keep that baby. Let's put him right back here in the tank. All right, hey, I'll get him. Go ahead. All right. Get right back in there. All right, right. Cast right up there. Boy, look at that. What size uh, worm? Do you normally use this little six-inch worm? Uh, yeah, I like that because it goes back and forth. You use that bigger worm anytime? Yeah. Oh, man, he come up there on that thing strong. What is it? I bet that's a garfish. There's some garfish. Huh? Oh, no, I don't, no, catch, I don't catch a garfish. It's a bass. It's a bass. Come jump. Come on. Jump. That's, like, watch, watch, watch. These fish have almost the coloring of a... Come on, jump. Oh. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. It's got that watermelon color to it. The real light color. In this clear water, I would think they'd be darker than that. Yeah. Well, he's about a pound and a half. Yeah. Look how fat he is. You want to put that one in your pond? You've been eating snakes. That's what he's <laughs> what do you mean? White snakes with red dots. Let me get back up here. Yeah, keep him. Keep him. Right. They seem to be holding in those little pockets. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, once they start hitting, reach. Right. Cast right hey, up. Hey, wait. There's... You got one? Yeah. Come on. Look at him jump. Let me get that net. Oh, I love to watch him jump. Love to watch him jump. Isn't that nice? Ah, oh, boy. That's good. 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 There you are. Stick this one in your pond? Yeah, keep him. Keep him. Little stock my pond. I'm building me one get of those right back ponds, in there. too. Are you? Yeah. Everybody's building a bass pond these days. Hey, you learn a lot from them, I think. I, yeah, I know you have. I've talked to you enough to know it's a tremendous place to watch and study fish. Hey, Glenn, look, there's one of the real ones right there. Huh? That, see that snake? See him? Where? He just crawled out in the water. See, there he is right there. Oh, hey. You got one? Yeah. Dang. He almost slipped by me. You say you saw a snake up here? <laughs> yeah, I was looking at him when he hit. Uh oh, that's a good fish. Oh, well, come out. out of that motor. Oh, Is he in the motor? No, no, I think he stayed there. Oh, good. Ooh. Oh, that's the biggest one so far. Boy. <laughs> Where's the net? <laughs> oh. Come Watch here. that light line. Watch that light line. <laughs> Get him up. Let him jump. Come on. Come on. Oh, nice. Uh, there oh, we go. Look at that. Oh, that's fun. Beautiful. Whew. Beautiful. Let's go back at it. No, I never caught Here, you take hey. that fish. 
You don't want to... <laughs> Let me have your rod and you take him off. Glenn, do you have any color preferences on these worms? Well, I don't know. I just like to keep changing them around until I find something that works. Just keep excited about what you're throwing, huh? Yeah. Ooh, there's a hit. Did you see that swirl? Think you'll come back? Oh. Hey, there he is. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. That light line. Boy, get down those weeds. That... I uh, see the good thing about white line. Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, that's pretty. Real? What, let him jump. Let him jump. Oh, I love to watch him jump. Isn't you that tell pretty? me when you're ready. Come on. Look at that. Oh, isn't that something? <laughs> I think that's your isn't favorite part of fishing, isn't it, Glenn? Isn't that beautiful? He got, look, at, look at him. Look at him. Boy, he is full of it, isn't he? Boy, that's a lot of fun. Whew. Hey, Glenn, we got about an hour left fishing. I think we'll just try to wind this thing up, and then we can fish on the dark. And why don't you tell us again... Uh, how you fish this, uh, when we should fish it, just kind of summarize for Okay, us. well, if you'll, uh, if you'll take one close look at this, what we want to do is show this to the people. That's a worm, a floating worm, about six inches long. It has a cork that is on the head of it, a very light, light hook, and that's all you need. And that's a dynamite bait, really, really good. Any place that you have critters that crawl off the banks, into the water, like snakes or salamanders or whatever they might be. You say we can keep fishing? I'm not fish to dark if you are. <laughs> okay, well, let's, let's have the cameras follow us around, and we might get a few more fish. Boy, it's starting to get too good to quit now. Boy, that is something. Ooh, it's a big... <laughs> woo -hoo. Uh, Oh, come, come on. on. Oh, look at the size of that rascal. Oh, boy. Isn't that pretty? That's beautiful. Oh, isn't you that want me pretty? Let me get, no, I'll mm -hmm. get him. Look at the size of that. Oh, come on. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> ah. Every day is a holiday and the skies are baby blue. And anybody don't like this life is crazy. There we are. <laughs> what that's about six pounds. Okay, let's summarize. Here are the main points to keep in mind when fishing top water. The water temperature should be from 55 to 80 degrees, with temperature in the 70s considered best. Most fish will come from water less than 15 feet deep. In the summer, fish early and late in the day. Preferably calm water and overcast days. And most importantly, patience is a great virtue in surface fishing. With the exception of buzz baits, don't be afraid to let that lure sit there for several seconds before twitching it. As a matter of fact, work it so slow you can almost feel your hair growing. Now, if you can be patient, you'll be a successful fisherman. Well, good luck and good fishing here. <laughs>